crazy. You mean uh, an evil guy? You're gonna who you know is known for like amplifying and lying about shit. You're gonna just be like, oh, he said he's gonna be able to manipulate and run the U.S. around. You're just gonna give him. You, you're gonna just gonna give him the soft power he asked for, Ben. This is the U.S. intelligence agency mind control. Oh, we get a he gets a banner ad straight out the gate. All right. Now, before this even starts, I just want to say how disgusting it is that these neocon fascists are still using the deaths of three thousand Americans to fucking virtue signal and this is exactly why 9-11 became a meme in response to their fucking nationalism of it president not with it and his plan on 9-11 was somewhat puzzling so he was in vietnam uh -huh. and he wanted to fly back to the united states instead of presumably delaying the the rest of his 9-11 sort of tribute remarks he decided to fly to Alaska from Vietnam because it's a shorter flight. And then he was going to do some sort of memorial okay. for 9-11 in Alaska, which is really related to 9-11 in, I, I don't know. There, there's no relation. He was in Alaska. Okay. And so he decided that he was going to do an event in Alaska. At this event in Alaska, he paid tribute to John McCain, which, again, I mean, that's, that's nice, but I don't know what that has to do with 9-11 per se. And then he tried to do the bipartisanship routine, which is kind of amazing considering that he's called half of Americans the kind of people who wish to overthrow the democracy. But sure, here was the president of the United States yesterday on a, a day of national unity. But why, Ben? It's hard to try to pause. One thing I... Huh? This is such horseshit. Half of Americans. Uh, he specifically... Go back, watch his fucking... Like, a, that address. No, 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 not here. I meant... Metaphorically, go back, watch Biden. Because, um, like... He even he says specifically, not all Republicans, mega Republicans. He's specifically mm. saying fascists, you know? Mm. He's he's saying in he's saying fascist because they say Republican in name only. What's the opposite of that? Fascist in anything but name only. <laughs> I always admired about John was how he put duty to country and first. Duty. And that's not hyperbole. He did. Above party, above politics. Above his own person. It's true. It's this true. day reminds us we must never lose that sense of national unity. So let that be the common cause of our time. Let us honor September 11th by renewing our faith in one another. Let us remember who we are as a nation. It's true. He did put duty first. Just so you know what Joe Biden was doing during the Vietnam War, he received five student draft deferments, first as an undergraduate at the University of Delaware, and then later as a law student at Syracuse University. And then after a medical okay. exam in April 68, which would have made him eligible for the draft, he received a 1Y classification, I mean. which meant he could only be drafted in a national emergency. Why? Because he had... Nice. It's good a really him. good broadcasting school. Oh, is it? Yeah. Was it back then? Huh? It's always been. It? It's always, yeah, it's always oh, been. Okay. Especially, uh, especially for sports casting and stuff. A lot of, mm, a lot of uh, people that you'll see on like ESPN and stuff. They came out of Syracuse University. Oh, no shit. Childhood asthma. So, uh, just a, a quick contrast there between John McCain, who Joe Biden ran against. Remember, Joe Biden was the vice presidential candidate for Barack Obama in 2008. I know it's now a decade and a half ago, but that's a thing that actually happened. And during that campaign, Joe Biden was not super nice to John McCain. But put aside all of the McCain, the the real thing here that that kind of sticks in the ben, is joe biden talking about they were literally unity. political <laughs> rivals <laughs> like you couldn't get like any like the two like they were both on like similar like uh foreign relations committees and stuff like that like if you go and you go look at the iraq war bills it's Joe Biden and John McCain are there for like all of that shit, you know, because they're on the like specific like foreign relations stuff. So he had to work with it's like um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg being friends with what's with the one judge who's getting in trouble for all the corruption now because <laughs> they work together, you know? Yeah, yeah. He is not even remotely a unifier. 
He's not somebody who cares about unity. He's somebody who pretends to care about unity, but the reality is that he has pursued the furthest left agenda of any president of my lifetime, and that actually includes Barack Based. Obama. The stuff that he has to do, restructuring, for example, Based. student loans, unilateral, the executive branch, the stuff that he has attempted to do in cramming down vaccines on 80 million people via OSHA, the oh, insane okay, levels of spending he has pursued. Okay, that's what leftism is to you. Healthcare, uh, healthcare <laughs> I guess, sure. I, I guess we could frame it as that. Wait until you hear about all the fucking HIV vaccines we gave out in Africa, Ben. And well, not vaccines, but you know the treatment and stuff. The the insane amount of money that he has poured down the rat hole of environmental causes while inflating the currency. Now, all this stuff is dramatic expansions in terms of the size and scope of government, and he's botched on foreign policy as well. Plus, he's just an insult. I, I have to say, Joe Biden is just yeah, the Afghan. Yeah. I know that a lot of people think, are like, Donald Trump and they say that Donald Trump is an That's insulting boring, person. Man. He insults Chill the out. intelligence and he's vulgar and he's just rude and all this kind of stuff. Drop kicking the walls, Joe Biden is humiliating in a different sort of way. Joe Biden is humiliating because Joe Biden is a corrupt politician who lies regularly. He lies uh -huh. all the time. Uh -huh. when, when Joe Biden and opens like his Donald mouth, Trump, the lies ben? flow forth like baubles from the mouth of Demosthenes. I mean, it's just the only thing that comes out of his face hole is untruth. So yesterday during 9-11, he was talking about, he just can't help himself. He starts talking about how he was at the ground zero site the day after 9-11. That's clearly not true. Even George W. Bush didn't go to ground zero until 9-14. Okay. So he's making things up here because this is ben. what he does. And he knows that the media are never going to hold him accountable. You understand that everyone conflates that entire period and like nobody has accurate memory about 9-11, right, Ben? You know this, right? Like this is like a studied phenomena that nobody actually remembers 9-11. They think that's they think that they saw news footage of like people falling. People will actually there was never there's a picture of somebody jumping out of the tower, mm -hmm. but there is never clear like you know, HD news cameras of people jumping no, out the of the tower. No, the videos came out much later. Huh? The videos came out yeah, much later, but which it was like the next, the next day like, there was like the first videos of the towers falling from the like ground mm -hmm. perspective. Mm -hmm. But people swear that they saw people jumping out of buildings the day that it happened while it was happening. Yeah, there was no live coverage of it. Like I mean, there, there might was. have been helicopters that maybe got something. No, but but... they only they only covered it from one angle. Um, so they covered, they went to the like press corps, like roof, right? So like CNN, MBS, NBC, they all mm. work out of the same office in New York, right? Yeah. So they had, the, they were shooting from the roof then and, and filming the towers on fire from the roof mm. in the live broadcast. And that, but because like the live broadcast, uh, like even when it falls, they can't even tell if it fell because of all the smoke. Interesting. And they're like, oh, we don't know if it completely fell or partially collapsed. It's very interesting. This is interesting. Accountable. Because when he was younger, they might have held him accountable when there were other Democrats like he was that. running against. But now George he's Sanchez has States. like a fake 9 11 story or something. Like his mom was there or something. It's, <laughs> okay. it's a lot different than that, you know? That's funny. If you're a Democrat who's the president of the United States, nothing you say will ever be used against you. It's the opposite of criminal justice. Anything you say can or will be used against you. Well, also, I, I mean, want to see Joe Biden, Biden says, once you're the president of the United States or after Democrat, nothing after 9 and see if Ben's, Ben is doing that much bad faith, and it's just, it's, he's just implying that he said day mm. after, if Biden only yeah. said after 9-11. He might have just said after, you're right. He didn't show the clip, so if he doesn't show the no. clip, then I don't take his word for it. Yep, that's fair. Say, will ever be used against you in any context. Here's Joe Biden just telling lies about 9-11. Okay, here we go. Thank you. Brown Zero in New York. I remember standing yeah. there the next day and looking at the building. I felt like I was looking through the gates of hell. It looked so devastating because the way you could, the way, from where you could stand. Oh, you mean it looked bad, 9 11. Okay. You know there was a first sentence to that. To he said the next day, it, he could have been talking about something complete, a completely different event, and then said the next day after that event. I don't see full context here, Ben. You know, saw images of 9-11 and, and all that. But, and this is who Joe Biden is. Now, all of this would just be kind of normal political garbaggio. All of this would just be me, except for the fact that on the anniversary of 9-11, Joe Biden thought this would be an excellent time to sign a $6 billion check to the Iranian mullahs. Oh, my God. Now, the juxtaposition of 9-11 and that is pretty awkward, not because the Iranians participated in 9-11, not because Al-Qaeda was Shia. They are not. They're a Sunni terror group. 
but because the overall thesis, which is that if you give money and resources and sukkur to Islamic terrorists, that eventually that is going to come back and bite. It was their money, Ben. The fuck are you talking about? Absolute. Yeah, sign the check. Sign the check of their own money. Yeah, cool. Which America actually had uh, uh, no part in distributing. Went from South Korea to Europe. <laughs> it was literally to just Iran. frozen assets. See, I... Like, mm, it's a shame people actually take this guy seriously. Do you he think he's? Do you, did he mention the prisoners at all? No. Okay, we'll see if it. We'll give him. We'll see. Give him the benefit of the doubt. He might. Hmm. You in pretty significant ways. That is one of the big messages of 9-11, if not the biggest message of 9-11. And on that date, the president who handed Afghanistan back to Al-Qaeda, that's what he did, uh -huh. handed it back to the Taliban and back to Al-Qaeda, is okay, now giving $6 billion to the leading provocateurs in the Middle East, uh. the greatest terror sponsors on the planet in Iran. That is what he did on the anniversary of 9-11. I mean, just for optical reasons, you would think that he had a brain in his head to think, maybe I should wait a week. But no, he had to do it now because Joe Biden wants a deal with the Iranians, a broader deal with the Iranians. It didn't Why? happen on well, so he can put it on his resume. In this hmm? It didn't happen on 9/11. No, it was like 5 days ago. What's the date on this video? Two weeks. It says it should say an exact date somewhere. 13th of September. They probably released the assets ahead, so when this was shot, they haven't... Oh, because remember, they released them and they had to be, like, they were basically in a holding thing for a minute. Okay. So... Same way that he wanted to pull out of Afghanistan like a moron, because he wanted it on his resume. Not because he thought it would actually okay, be good guess for what, the world. Here's what happened. Not because he actually you had a plan, he didn't. So, uh, they reached the deal to release them on August 11th, right? Mm. So, just because of how... It would, they would probably say one month would be a deadline, which yeah. would have been September 11th. Okay. Totally planned. But it was only one week ago when the prisoner swap happened. So they probably had to unfreeze the capital and move it to Qatar first. Yep. Most likely. And, uh, and that's what Ben is twisting here. Mm -hmm. September 18th were released Monday as part of a prisoner exchange. So that's what it's that's what it probably is. That's a hundred percent what it is. But because he wanted to say that he was the guy who got it done. Never put it above politicians. Never put it below politicians for them to do things just out of pure yep. egotistic desire. They they want it on their resume and so they just do it. It's not because they have the best interest of the country at heart. That's clearly not the case here. Joe Biden does not have the best interest of the country at heart when he sends a $6 billion check to people who have been responsible. For it, was. it was. It was on September Americans in the Middle East. Remember, during the Iraq yeah. War, it was Iranian-sponsored Shiite militias that were killing American soldiers. And Joe Biden is signing those people $6 billion checks on the anniversary of 9-11. No, he didn't. While paying tribute to the heroes of 9-11. It's just, it's beyond reason. We'll get to the details of that story in just one second. First, details. is your cell okay. phone running out of battery? A key step in securing the release of five American citizens Detained in Iran. He even Iran, said it. The matter said. He even proved As part of the arrangement, wrong. the administration will release five Iranian citizens detained in the United States. And so, just to make this clear, this is not even a straight up trade. I'm um, actually kind Iranian of uh, relieved in the that. States. So, one, I'm relieved that there's uh, actual reporting on this in, uh, ahead of time. Like, mm -hmm. it, it wasn't just when it happened recently. Yeah. Um, but also, like, I can see why Ben Shapiro specifically would be more plugged into Iran. But sure. it's kind of a, it's kind of, uh, I, I, it's a relief to like have them doing like real news. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like he, I, I'm sure that That's many people, matters. like anyone who's conservative, just because Joe Biden did this, they're going to have a problem with it. Mm -hmm. There's not going to be any kind of, it's like, and then a lot of people who are pro Joe Biden, if they knew about this, they would, might have a problem with it. Anyone who like, uh. Like anyone who is friends with an Iranian di diaspora is going to be have, under the impression that this was bad. Mm. So it's not. It's not a popular thing to do because we believe that they are involved in, say, terror activities for Americans who have been wrongly detained in Iran. It's not even a straight up trade. It's that plus six billion dollars. Well, I gotta say, it was their money. 
Joe Biden's record here is looking a lot like the GM of the New York Jets at this point. He, okay. he, he's trading Brittany Griner for the merchant of death. And now he's trading $6 billion and five Iranians we are holding here for five American citizens. I, I just have a question. What exactly would be the incentive for terrorist groups not to take American citizens hostage at this point? You know that the, the sucker in the White House is going to sign you over the bank he, if you do. They didn't gain money. Think about it. They took hostages and then money was taken from them. They're not being rewarded. That They said, you took our shit, we're taking your shit. You know, we could have continued to seize more assets, right? Because we sanctioned them over this and it was money held up in sanctions that we were able to freeze because of those sanctions. Okay, Ben? It, the money always existed in limbo. It is it is uh, quantum politics. <laughs> The, the central principle of don't negotiate with terrorists, obviously there's play around the edges. There's situ certain situations where negotiations are necessary, but uh -huh. one of the key elements here is Trump, you don't actually what negotiate about when with terrorists. Trump literally negotiated the Doha talks that initiated the withdrawal of Afghanistan and locked them into that withdrawal. What about that, Ben? What about, what about when he gave Kirkuk to the IRGC? Do we care about that? You wouldn't hear Ben talking about that. I want to know, were you pro? Remember that those uh, IRGC targets that they freaked out about? It was before the withdrawal of Afghanistan, and they didn't have anything to critique Joe Biden on yet. And mm. there was two IRGC targets that were hit after the uh, missile strikes in uh, Howler, uh, Kurdistan. Do uh, you think Ben had a problem with those bombings on IRGC targets? Or did you think he actually was like, finally, Biden did something good. He killed Iranians. <laughs> I don't know. What was his opinion on Qasem Soleimani? You know what? I think uh, I'm going to look that up. That's an interesting question. I'll put it on the list to react to. Mm -hmm. To the tune of $6 billion plus five detainees in the United States for five people wrongfully detained in Iran. That's crazy talk. Congress was notified of the move on Monday. It's likely to come as a relief to U.S. prisoners, families, and supporters, said the Washington. Well, isn't that nice? I mean, listen. Biden values Americans higher than Ben does. I want those people back as well. Also, the United States has national interests. Those national interests do not involve giving $6 billion to the world's leading terror sponsors. It didn't. My God. It's also expected to come under harsh criticism from Republicans in Congress, opposed to any agreement that allows for the release of frozen Iranian funds, money that's now being transferred from South Korea to Qatar and limited for the purchase of humanitarian goods like food or medicine. Okay, that's the part that's a lie. They're saying it's going to be for humanitarian purposes. There's only one problem. The Iranians immediately said, no, 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 no. you don't understand. We're going to use it wherever we please. According to NBC News, Iranian President Ebrahim Raisi said his government will decide how it will spend $6 billion in previously frozen funds oh, due, to yeah? be, due to be released in a prisoner exchange. He said it will be spent, quote, wherever we need it. Oh, so you mean you're going to spend it to murder people because that's what you do, because you'd rather that your country be impoverished and your people unhappy than We're that you actually crazy. stop terror crap and start building. Crazy, you mean... Uh, an evil guy you're gonna who you know is known for like amplifying and lying about shit. You're gonna just be like, oh, he said he's gonna be able to manipulate and run the U.S. around. You're just gonna mm -hmm. give him you. You're gonna just gonna give him the soft power he asked for, Ben. Because you're the only one really talking about this. <laughs> you're the one. You just you're the one now empowering Iran, not Joe Biden. He just held six billion dollars from them. <laughs> Also, also because of how inflation works, they lost money, by That's the way, true. especially in Iran. Iran has crazy inflation, you know, like imagine the devalue on that fucking currency that was held yeah. for that long. Come a on, lot. Ben. That lost a lot of money, I reckon. Building. That's what you would rather do if you are the, the evil regime in Tehran. In an exclusive interview in Tehran, Raisi suggested the Americans held in Iran would be coming home soon saying the U.S.-Iran prisoner exchange deal will be completed in due time, that the American detainees were in very healthy condition. Under the arrangement, Tehran will be granted access to the roughly $6 billion in Iranian oil revenues. U.S. officials are lying, and they're roughly saying, oh, no, 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 they're only going to use it for food, mm -hmm. right? Because that's what they do. If you hand money to dictatorial regimes that hate your guts, that probably they use it exactly where you're They're if carrying a lot of weight on that roughly right there. Yeah. Even like, even like $5.9 is a lot of fucking money to lose. Mm-hmm a lot thing you know about the iranians is that we can trust them they've never reneged on a deal ever if for example they say they are developing nuclear power for peaceful purposes despite the fact that they're one of the great oil producing regions on planet earth 
We probably have to believe them. That's probably, the, they would never deceive, say, the IAEA. They would never, ever do that sort of thing. I love that Raisi is just saying the quiet part out loud. He's just like, yeah, no, we're using it for whatever we want. That's how this little fucking the Iranians even respect Joe Biden. <laughs> They're like, yeah, you give us some money. Ben. You lie to your people and you tell them that we'll use it for- They for, sell for, the for, oil. Uh, for food. That, you know, using, if they actually use nuclear energy, it would allow them to transfer more oil funds. Like- you can't, you need like, you need like pipelines and, and refineries and all that shit to like refine the oil. Also, <laughs> um, think about uh, their already fucked economy. Um, obviously, it's not going to have as much as impact on the sanctions themselves that were put in place that held that six, your cat just reset the video. I know. <laughs> uh, the six billion that were held in place isn't going to be like as much as the sanctions themselves. But even that just... Iran's fragile economy, taking six billion out of it and just losing that oil essentially for however long it's been, that's obviously going to affect Iran's economy a lot. So Joe Biden has really done a lot of economic leverage for these <laughs> lives. I can get this. Humanitarian means whatever the Iranian people need. So this uh, money will be budgeted it. for those needs, and the needs of the Iranian people will be decided and determined by the Iranian government. Oh, that, that is like a classic right there. That is such an amazingly, I, I, I kind of love it because it's so blatant. That's like, you give me a credit card and you tell me, I'm, a, I'm, I'm working for Daily Wire. You give me a Daily Wire credit card. You tell me I need to go use it for Daily Wire resources, right? And what you mean is you want me to go down to the local, to the local office depot and pick up like some paper and ink. And I'm like, oh, for Daily Wire resources. Perfect. That credit card belongs to me. I'm going to use it for whatever resources the Daily Wire deems necessary, and who deems it necessary will be me. And so I just go and put like a Lambo on the credit card. That's what are you trying to what they're doing? Except what are you trying to say here? For an ben, a Lambo is just ben, what's what's going on with your company cards? <laughs> Do we need to see your company's tax records, Ben? Sounds like a bit of projection. Bit of, bit of projection. Just a bunch of shoulder-fired missiles. That, that's that's what it is. The prisoner exchange calls for the release of five American citizens held in Iran in return for five Iranians under detention in the United States. And again, gives them six billion dollars. The five American prisoners were placed under house arrest August 10th as a first step in the agreement. The Biden administration waited until, of course, September 11th to inform that just the, the optical. This this is what happens when you have a White House that legitimately does not care. What the American okay, people think. Okay, so Ben, you want to believe that you want them to like no matter what. what they do you, crap like this on the anniversary of 9 11, assuming that everybody attention. will just shrug. And maybe they're right. Right. Maybe everything is so baked into the cake, into the polarized. What? He wants them to add another day of detention just so they keep sacred the date of 9 11. Those people are going to stay in jail one day longer I in an Iranian so. prison. Is that what? Is that what we rather have, Ben? Oh my Get God. your fucking cat off the desk. <laughs> when you have a White House that legitimately does not care what the American people think and believe that the media will cover for them no matter what. They do crap like this on the anniversary of 9-11, assuming that everybody oh, will yeah. not No, never. Trump, 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 no, never. Trump no, no, no. always cared about what the American people think. Not the guy who's constantly like, I'm working for both sides and establishing unions on both sides right now. No, definitely not him. Trump, though. Trump. Yeah, everything is so baked into the cake into the polarized cake, that nothing can outrage the American people at this point. Uh -huh. I don't actually think that's an amazing bet. I think Joe Biden made that bet on Afghanistan, and it sunk his approval ratings into the low, into the low 40s, high 30s. Uh -huh. He's been Trump there ever Reagan. since. So I think this sort of stuff can damage Joe Biden. I, I know that he thinks he's invulnerable because he's likely to run against Donald Trump for president. And there's some what? truth to that. That means a durable 45% of the American public will certainly vote for him. But 45 ain't 50. So he's playing a, a very risky game here. And just one second. We'll get to the fact that, again, Joe Biden is yes, because vulnerable. And that all of Joe Biden, you know what I've seen, you know, being plugged into like the lefty side of the Internet. You know what I've seen? Everyone talking about this prisoner swap. Definitely. It's like it's been on everyone's minds. Definitely mm -hmm. not what certain idiot is doing what. You know, I got I've seen a little bit of Armenia, you know, obviously nothing about this. Come on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. OK defenses of him by his allies are growing weaker and weaker. We should point out that abortion continues to rage across the United States. 
by some numbers, it's actually elevated this year because there are so many people who are freaked out about the possibility they won't be are able to abort that baby that they're trying to actually do it right now. now? Uh, It'll tell you not. if you hover over the... But there is a way yeah, that you can help a, prevent this. There. And that would be by giving to preborn. Oh preborn. God. Yeah, it's an ad to end it. Yeah, we're done. At the bottom, I put Qasem Soleimani. So.